Oh, what is up? And Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. Although it's not terribly late in the day. It feels more like Merry Christmas aft would be a little bit more appropriate. Anybody? Merry Christmas aft? Where are we going? Boxing Day for the Brits. I want to give a special shout out to all of my British listeners. Thanks for that extra strain of COVID. I didn't get you anything. Obviously, our cousins across the pond uh, still upset about that little revolution. You know, it's only been a couple hundred years. We're still upset about the election. <laughs> Yeah, how about that little uh, little um, what's going on in the news? Current events, right? Like England coming up with not one but two strains, two new strains of COVID. <laughs> apparently, nothing really to worry about. Uh, apparently, it's just like it's all the kind of the same. It's just extra quick for transmissions and stuff because, you know me, like I was just saying, like just the other day, you're like, you know what, COVID really needs to transmit better. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you on that. I do like that our governor cut a deal with uh, the three major airlines coming into New York City, uh, Delta, I guess, Virgin, and British Airways, uh, saying that, listen, don't bring any of those limey Brits over unless you test them first. And the airlines are like, yeah, man, we can do that. Because uh, we were looking for help from the federal government, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> so it's funny, like, people don't realize that, like, the airports themselves, as much as the grounds and air and lands and stuff, are kind of under the Port Authority control, which is actually, in New York, it's uh, Port Authority is a multi-state thing. It's not even just New York, so we don't have full control over it. Uh, it's Jersey and Connecticut and, and New York. Um, but uh, the reason that the FAA is in charge of airlines and airports and stuff is because it's the federal <laughs> Aviation Association. Uh, so we can't actually stop airplanes from coming into New York City, like, or Newark, or, you know, LaGuardia, like any of that stuff. We can't do any of that stuff. It's a federal thing. And uh, I was just thinking, like, how funny it is that, like, we've got this other strain. And again, there's no block, no federal action taken whatsoever on blocking those cases from coming into New York. And, you know, say and feel whatever you want about Governor Cuomo and how he's handled certain things. But, like, he literally said at his press conference, like, we're not doing this again. We are not doing this again. And good. Like, you're not always supposed to agree with what your dad says and does. But, like, if your dad's making the rules, like, yeah, there's a generally a 90% chance he kind of knows what he's doing. But I just want to start that out politically, make sure we drive everybody out of the show. Uh, I am videoing, <laughs> still haven't looked that up, video something again, uh, for the top 20, which, uh, if you don't know, uh, is live today on StrangerHood TV. Yeah. So if you make your way over to StrangerHood TV, you can actually see what the first 20 minutes, give or take, 20 minutes of the Hard Rock Lunchbox actually look like. Uh, with me basically bitching, whining, and complaining about something that's going on in the world this week, uh, either with me, my band, other bands, or lately the world, because let's face it, there's not a whole lot going on with bands right now, so it's, I realize the show has drifted awkwardly political or current eventy, but that's what's going on, and that's how we do this. But uh, we're about two weeks behind, which is exactly kind of the way I want it, uh, so they will premiere the top 20. Uh, that's the name of the new show. It's the top 20 because it's the top 20 minutes of Hard Rock Lunchbox. Uh, that will premiere every Thursday, I think at midnight. So Thursday really early uh, on Strangerhood TV. And you can check that out there. It's uh, the Craving Strange uh, YouTube channel. I think you go to StrangerhoodTV.com and we'll just route you over there. I don't know for sure. My, per my promotion is a little... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm early into the promotion of, of, of this on Stranger TV because it just happened today, honestly. And I just, you know, doing what I can. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so when you do eventually see this episode, you might wonder to yourself or out loud, if you're a crazy person, uh, why I am wearing a uh, sleeveless tee, like a workout tee. 
And not that I care so much about fashion or looks, obviously, at all. But uh, it is December 24th, and it is also approaching 60 goddamn degrees today. So... But don't worry, we're about to have one of those meteorological events because the temperature is going to drop 30 degrees. If you're a fan of Chris Porter at all, uh, you'll appreciate that joke more than others. If you're not a fan of Chris Porter, that's totally fine. We can uh, we can talk about that some other time. Thank you. But it is Christmas Eve. If you haven't started tracking Santa on your NORAD tracker, you should do that. Santa Claus has uh, definitely been approved and has, uh, I guess, received the vaccine because he's got his vaccine passport because he's able to travel through all 190 plus countries today and doesn't even have to stop in customs, which honestly, we should be looking into that. <laughs> but he is cleared. He has already started his approach and should be over uh, North America within, I don't know, eight to ten hours. Like Jesus. I mean, not like Jesus, like Jesus the exclamation. Like, that's that's really soon. Like, A plus Santa, definitely uh, good on you. So, what is it that I want to talk about today? I truly wanted to talk about something good and something, like, positive and all those other things. Because it is Christmas Eve, but then I realized... There really isn't anything good or positive to talk about. So I'm just going to default to what I've been sort of wrestling with this week. And it's going to start out um, somewhat politically. Um, But political is not my point. So if anybody's going to be offended by the political part of this, just sit with me. I've, I've told you in the past when it's going to be political and you can tune out and all that other stuff. Like, that's cool. Like, I don't want anybody to be here that doesn't want to be here and, like, you don't have to listen to every conversation. We're not going to agree on everything and that's fine. I think if, it, if the box has shown anything over the years, it's that we definitely will not agree on everything, but there's definitely common ground to be had. And the common ground to be had is exactly kind of what, what, I, wanted, what, did I, want, what I wanted to talk about today. So what's been going on in political and current events and stuff is that Congress, the United States Congress, has gotten together and finally come up with some sort of agreement uh, on COVID relief. That's a big deal. Like People have been asking for months for for help, help for uh, uh, municipalities, direct stimulus to taxpayers, uh, and and that sort of thing, and direct help for businesses and museums, and of course save our stages, which is something we've talked about on the box a lot. Um, but so they finally got together, and the and the way they actually got together is the Democrats actually yielded, they acquiesced, they said they were not going to, uh, but they wanted to try and get something in. According to them, according I'm not I'm not shilling for anybody. According to them, they wanted to get something in the hands of of the American people, uh, most notably the stimulus checks they wanted to get. Uh, the Democrats were asking for $2,000 in direct stimulus aid to, to people. They wanted another round of extension and extra money in unemployment insurance. If you remember back in March or April or whenever they passed the first one, they added $600 a month to your unemployment insurance, which was really good because that was actually making or helping people make actually more money on unemployment than not uh, than working and that's a whole other issue and we can talk about that just don't be mad at it because you're going to be mad at the wrong thing but we can talk about that some other time again I'm not trying to be political i just want to set the stage for something uh so they, the democrats acquiesced they were like cool we'll take six hundred dollars for 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 people and three hundred dollars and extend unemployment benefits until march right march is kind of like the new target when vaccines should be you know more readily available spring would be right around the corner so we'll be moving back outside if we have another successful summer like we just have that paired with vaccines and maybe better understandings of covid and stuff like that i feel like this thing will be whipped pretty or contained let's say contained pretty easily come april april may june whatever so i think that's a good thing and whether you think it's a good thing i mean we can disagree on that it's really not important so but Congress got together and they, they passed. There was there's capitulations on both sides and they passed this thing kind of overwhelmingly. There was a bunch of bullshit that went into it and a lot of stuff that I'm really, really opposed to, including stuff like 
they were given five hours to read 5,000 pages of this bill, and all they were told is, like, we need to help the American people, and no congressman or woman is going to be like, no, damn the American people, except maybe Rand Paul. I've seen him actually do it, so it's possible that that could happen. But, so they passed this thing, and what ended up happening is they passed two bills, because it was two bills at the same time. And I'm only telling you this because I only found this stuff out yesterday, and even I was surprised about it. I'm not the most well-read person in the world, but, like, I tend to be a little bit more well-read on this stuff than others, and I was surprised from telling you this. There were two bills that went through. There was the COVID relief bill. That was the $900 billion thing that you've heard keep, everybody keeps talking about. And there was the omnibus spending bill. That's the... Congress pays for, for everything the government does, and they have to pass something by the end of the year. I don't know why they did them together. I don't know why they tied them together. I guess it's because at the end of the year. I don't know. That omnibus thing, that's like the two-point-something trillion dollars. That has all that foreign aid that everybody's complaining about and, like, you know, medical research about, like, you know, toilets and stuff. like All that crap, that's on the omnibus bill. That is not the COVID relief bill, right? Uh, but they went to the president together and the president said absolutely not this is ridiculous we're not doing this and you know whatever his motives i don't care what i appreciated about it is that it aligned pretty much exactly for the most part with what the democrats had been asking for and even nancy pelosi who really is the boogeyman not only on the right but like to a lot of people on the left like i am not happy that pelosi's in charge of the house anyway i don't think she represents what i'm trying to accomplish but that's neither here nor there just understand that there's some common ground there that we're not exactly pleased with our leadership all the time on the left just as much as you shouldn't be on the right so that's some sort of common ground right there um but even she and 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 aoc were like okay cool we can do two thousand dollars mr uh, mr president that's exactly what we were asking for and they went ahead this morning and tried to get that through and house republicans said no um, so it's unlikely you're going to see any of that stimulus money by the end of the year. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to be following it. I, I, I kind of religiously do not uh, hang out online over the weekends. I definitely don't do it over the holidays. So last I heard is that this bill needed to be passed by Monday. I cannot imagine that Congress is going to be working on it over the weekend. So I think it's kind of a dead deal and that's fine. Now, why did I say all that? Why is that important for the setup I'm trying to get to? I'll tell you. Because there's a lot of common ground there that people cannot believe that they are sharing with people that they thought they would never share common ground with. There's a lot of people on social media and in the, and the media in general that are really, really irritated about a $600 payout and $700 billion to Sudan. It should be. Get your house in order, and then you can help the rest of the world. We have a role to play in the rest of the world. We absolutely do. If you don't think so, you know nothing about geopolitics, this should not be a conversation you should be engaging in. We have a place in the world, and it's an important one. However, as every teenager knows, if you do not get your room clean on Friday, you can't go out Friday night. So if you can't keep your American people safe, keep them from living and sleeping in boxes and from dying in hallways, you have no business putting $1.5 trillion into some Asian development plan. I understand why you're doing it. You're trying to curb Chinese influence in the rest of the world, and that is a noble cause. But right now, we need to look inside and fix the problems that are going on here. And I find very few people across the spectrum that disagree with that. And that's not me first. That's not even really America first. That's humanity first. And that's kind of where I've been trying to, like, draw this line on every single issue. I'm not very much a what would Jesus do kind of guy, but, like, I am a very much like what would a good person do here. And that brings me to this. Because one of the greatest divides I've seen over the past year is this fight between Republicans and Democrats and liberals and conservatives. And without trying to hurt anybody's in particular feelings right now, I think anybody that's screaming about those particular labels don't actually know what those labels are referring to. Like, first of all, most Trump supporters aren't conservatives. They aren't. And most true conservatives are not Trump supporters. 
that's the people like in the Lincoln Project, uh, you know, Republicans for Biden and that kind of stuff. Like, these are people that were never Trumpers. The Trump, I don't know, epidemic, uh, populist movement thing is very much based out of the Tea Party logic, which is fine. The Tea Party was a great idea. Like, let's get rid of all these career politicians, something I can agree on. Let's let's bring in new ideas and fresh faces, something I can agree on. Uh, let's talk about QAnon and repressing everybody. See, you kind of lost me right there. But, you know, as Meatloaf said, two out of three ain't bad. It's not a bad concept. But those are the Trumpers, and they keep calling themselves conservatives, and they're not. What they are is anchors, honestly, and, like, very, like, reactionary kind of angry people and like this is different and I don't like it that way it's very fear based and that's fine but call it what it is and the same is true of like liberals like what I've been hearing about like liberals is really just the poster child for what you think of a liberal is like this overprivileged white chick probably from Boston I'm guessing I don't know just hating everything about everybody and mad and is getting her schooling paid for, and now she wants free college and all that other stuff. Like, that seems to be the boogeyman on the right. Like, the right. Like, that's the boogeyman. That's that's the liberal. And, like, you know, people hate AOC. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I think I got that name right. If I did. Yeah. If I did, yeah. Let's get some applause. If I didn't, okay. You're Spanish at a SUNY school, man. There's only so much I can do. Uh, and what I have to say to people about, like, AOC is very simple. Like, first of all, if she's not your representative, shut up. It's not your problem. She is not a national leader at all. She is not Speaker of the House. She doesn't even chair anything, really. She's a sophomore uh, at this point, uh, representative, and she represents the good people uh, of a select district in Queens, and they love her. They overwhelmingly revoted her in. And, you know, if you're from, like, South Carolina or the Midwest and you just hate her because everything you've heard about her, who cares? Nobody nobody cares. Like, really, nobody cares. It's not your thing. Like, you should be worried about your representatives when they're doing, like, their kid diddling on little boys on those Cub Scout trips. Like, worry about that. Worry about the bribes they're taking. Worry about people like Duncan Hunter and their multi-hundred-thousand-dollar schemes and scams that lend them in jail and then get them pardoned by our dear president. I'm going to pull off this because that's going to piss me off. I'm going to go really, really political. This is what I wanted to say. One of the things I've been seeing, and it's just bothering me and bothering me and bothering me and bothering me every time I see it, this this one kind of meme and 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 concept on the right is is this and and maybe you've seen it and maybe you haven't but it's i am proud to be everything that liberals hate okay right that's the graphic i'm proud to be everything that liberals hate now i have to tell you financially speaking i tend to be fairly conservative i am okay with social programs that make sense i am not okay with hemorrhaging money to support people that aren't even trying. Not cool with that at all. My stance on illegal immigration has been quite well established publicly and on this show, so I don't need to go into it now. But I think you could argue that fiscally I'm quite conservative and do not like backdoor taxes, don't like all the extra taxes. I'm furious about school taxes. I found out my superintendent of the schools makes more than my governor does. And uh, Cuomo is one of the highest paid governors in the country, and he still makes less. And the dude that calls my house every couple of hours to tell me about a new COVID case at Oakwood. <laughs> That's another show. So I'm fiscally conservative. But socially I'm pretty liberal. I'm not all the way left. Like, I'm, I'm not. I'm just not. But I do believe and have believed for as long as I can remember that if you're telling somebody what they, what they are doing, like, that they can't do something, that as long as it doesn't infringe on your rights to do something, then you're kind of wrong in the way that this society works. Right? So, like... What I end up being, because of that sort of mantra, is I have a real problem with um, 
like social um, discriminations, right? Like, I'm guilty of absolutely liking a good sexist joke, a good racist joke, um, um, uh, mental retardation. I don't even know if that's the right word anymore. Special needs. I don't know. I'm absolutely guilty of liking those jokes. I uh, flat out admit it. I've been called out for it before. I've been called out by my own kid for it several times. Like, yeah, man, I'm not perfect. There is This is not the hard rock perfect host lunchbox. It's never going to be. That's just too wordy. <laughs> I'm not perfect by any means. But I really do believe in a lot of live and let live. It's why the libertarians are so attractive at some points until they just, like, completely F off on any sort of responsibility and, like, stuff like building roads and hospitals. Like, yeah, we're not all pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. All right, guys? Let's just relax. Um, But, yeah, man, like, gay marriage? I don't even know why that's an issue. Don't even know. And, like, there are so many people. So many people on the on the right that are like, can't do that. It's ruining the American families. Oh, but you can get divorced as many times as you want. Illegitimate kids? All day long. But those gays are ruining marriage. No, they're not. They're just people trying to get married and spend their life together with a the person they love. That's, that's it. And, you know, like the going joke is like, if you're worried about gay marriage, don't worry. If somebody, if a gay person asks you to marry them, you can say no. Which I thought was important. I do think you still have to touch the tip of their pee pee, but I don't know. I don't know the rules because I'm not gay. So, and yes, I did say pee pee on the box. It's fine. It's Christmas Eve. You know, like women's right to choose. Like I'm going to tell a woman like what she can do with her body. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I can't tell women anything. <laughs> I don't even know that I'm qualified to suggest anything. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even have an eye for fashion. I can't even tell a woman, like, I don't think that scarf goes with those boots. Like, I'm not going to tell a woman what she can or cannot do with her body. I'm not going to tell anybody what they can or cannot do with their body. You know what I mean? Like, these are basic things. Like, it's stuff like minimum wage, like living wages. Like, yeah, man, if you work 40 hours a week and you're working full time, you should be able to live your life. That's what people don't understand. And people are like, oh, these people are lazy. Like, no, they're not. <laughs> are there some lazy people? Sure. Are there lazy people on all sides? You bet your ass there are. It's just this simple stuff. This is and 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 taxes and millionaires and billionaires like. How many billionaires do we friggin' need? Like, how many do we need? Like, yeah, like, I'd be cool with it. <laughs> like, I'd be all right. But, like, I'd be so tired getting rid of money if I was a billionaire. Like, I'd just, I'd sleep all day long because I'd be exhausted. So, as a proud social liberal, these are the things that I stand for. Like, these are just some of my favorite things. These are a few of my liberal thing. These are a few of my... You see, like, it works. It works right in the song. But... Oh, man, I'm tired. <laughs> but, back to that original point. I'm proud to be everything that la- liberals hate. I hate racists. <laughs> real racists. Like, real. Like, kill black people because they're black. Pull black people over because they're black. Redlining. Keep black people poor. Keep the blacks and browns away. I hate real racism. Racist and racism. I hate sexist. People that abuse their power. That whole Me Too movement exploded because men were just waving their dongs around expecting women to service them because they thought they were owed it. Owed it? Really? Like, balls on you, my friend. <laughs> like, you know, and I'm I'm really okay with gay marriage. I feel like if you figure out, if you figure out, if you find in the 8 billion people here, like, somebody that you can, like, spend your life with, or spend time with even, some of your life with, as a partner in this world, moving forward, I don't really give a shit what they are. Like, relationships are hard. And you find any, anybody that you can do this with, marry them. 
You should be allowed to do this without some douche from Oklahoma telling you, no, it's the wrath of God. Like, really? Like, there seems to be a lot of tornadoes in Oklahoma. You want to talk about wrath of God? I mean, I don't know what you guys do after church in Oklahoma. I assume you, like, do a little docking, maybe? Because, I mean, you're bringing a lot of wrath. You know what I'm saying? So, proud to be what liberals hate. Racist, sexist, misogynist, homophobic. I don't know. I could keep going. Are you really proud to be those things? Or is it just a cute, shiny meme that you want to just post? Be cool with your conservative friends. I doubt it. I doubt most of you are like that. And I want you to think about what I just said and how maybe similar we are. Because wouldn't it be a bitch if it ended up that you were a liberal too? Man. So Florida sucks the big one, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Turns out a day to remember was on to something. Here's a little uh, ADTR on the box. Let's bomb that panhandle. Yeah, definitely.